Crema Media's Mining Weekly is interviewing John Martin, the Vice President Southern Africa of Keltire, the Mining Tire Group. Mining Weekly would like to kick off this interview with getting a bit of insight into Keltire. Uh, Keltire has been uh, servicing the mining industry now for probably more than 50 years. Um, we're, uh, we're based on five continents uh, um, on, around the globe. Uh, we focused uh, quite heavily in, uh, in the surface mining industry and of course in South Africa as well. We, uh, we do a lot of the underground uh, services as well. We pride ourselves uh, in terms of the quality of service that we provide and, and as part of that service uh, that we deliver to the industry, we do a lot of innovations. Uh, which we now call uh, Cal CalPro. And um, one of those innovations that we have is, uh, is a very nice tyre recycling facility in the northern part of Chile, um, which uh, we've termed our uh, thermal conversion facility. It's CalTyre's IP, uh, which has been developed over the last uh, five or six years. Are mining tyres being recycled now on a big scale? On a global scale, um, to a certain extent they are. Um, there's various options that, that are being used right now, for example, uh, uh, shredding of tires or something called devulcanization or, or creating of rubber crumb. Um, but from a, let's say, a cal tires perspective, that's probably or repurposing of the tire uh, rather than recycling. Our, um, our thermal conversion solution is for us is uh, probably the most self-contained recycling facility uh, available in the world for um, designed specifically for mining tires. In South Africa um, the Waste Bureau is responsible for uh, the abatement of tires um, but uh, we certainly wish that uh, that could be expanded now to to include uh, the mining side of it. And a company like Cal Tire in tires, you stick to the tires. Yes. You've seen fit to go and do some research, R&D, into tire recycling and the circular economy for sure. And uh, why did you do that? Well, I th first of all, I think it's it's the right thing to do. Um, and secondly, it's uh, it was identified as a requirement uh, probably um, close to ten years ago um, that this is something that the industry needs. Um, primarily driven out of uh, Chile, where legislation then uh, uh, forced, if I can say they used uh, the term force, forced the industry then to start with a recycling process. Um, uh, Caltai saw that as an opportunity then to extend the services, um, the quality of the services, and obviously these innovations that we bring um, to the industry. Um, and uh, it's, it's a long-term project, of course. Uh, um, it's not just Chile that requires it, but essentially all mining uh, jurisdictions around the world will require some form of tire recycling in the future. And how does thermal conversion, OTR, tire recycling work? Well, in general, it's, it's, it's a relatively simple process, but uh, it's quite complex in the way that it actually uh, uh, culminates in the technology that's, that's inside the uh, facility. It's, uh, we simply collect the tires from, uh, from the mine um, uh, at that point. We take, uh, um, we take ownership and custody of the tire. Uh, it's documented from its serial number, um, and we can then provide evidence to the, to the, mine, the mine owner that his tire or their tires have been recycled in an in a ethical and uh, sustainable manner. Uh, it gets delivered to the facility, we size it, we clean it, um, it gets put into the chamber, um, and uh, goes through a pyrolysis type process. Um, and we generate then uh, products at the end, which then can go back into the circular economy. Simply things like oil, uh, uh, steel, carbon black, etc. And what can we learn from Chile here? What can South Africa learn about this technology and legislation? The legislation was, of course, key. Um, the legislation in Chile is, is solid. It's, uh, um, we know who is responsible for the recycling of the tires. Um, in South Africa, I think uh, the uh, legislation needs certainly needs to be firmed up. Um, at the moment, the Waste Bureau is responsible for tire abatement in this country. We believe and understand that there's some form of recycling going on or repurposing of tires, but it's really restricted to small tires. Um, so we need, uh, we need cooperation from government. Um, we have, as end users, we have already paid 2 rand 30 per kilogram 
of every single tire that gets manufactured that gets imported into this country. So we have already paid some money to government for the recycling or for the abatement of tires, all tires, mining tires included. So to move this forward, we certainly need help from government. We need participation from the operations, uh, communities, uh, investors, etc. So um, uh, all the components are there. We just need to get everybody to get together uh, to be able to get this moving. And you spoke about size. Just give us some idea of the size of your tires. Uh, the tires weigh probably in the, in the biggest ones are probably in the order of five to six tons uh, when the, when they come to us uh, to the t to the recycling facility. Um, we size it and we, we process about 20 tons of, of tire at a time. At the end of the process, we're generating in the order of six and a half thousand liters of, of uh, fuel oil. Um, there's uh, four tons of steel that comes out of it and uh, about eight tons of carbon black. Um, so all these products again feed back into the circular economy, particularly of interest for, I think, for the the global economy is the, is the carbon black or carbon ash as it is when it comes out of the, out of the, 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 the reactors. We're in the process of developing technology now to clean that up um, to a, a purification level that would be acceptable to, uh, to all the tire manufacturers um, where the carbon can be then reused to manufacture new tires. So if you're talking about the full circular economy, you can imagine that an old waste tire can generate a brand new tire simply by the products that come out of the process um, and gets fed back uh, into the creation of new tires. So probably the circular economy to the nth degree. I mean, it's, it's really old tires creating new tires. And that's really what we wanted out of this process is that we had the best and highest use of the products that come out of the chamber. And, you know, I just wanted to get some idea of what's happening to the tires now. We know about Chile, yeah. but w what happens to our tires here in South Africa? We've got these giant tires. Well, previously, uh, um, uh, mining companies generally buried those tires in, uh, in waste dumps. Um, and it, uh, uh, it was, in, and it's still in, in many countries, and certainly in Africa, that's, that's still the practice. The right thing to do, um, well, first of all, it's illegal now to do that, which is a really good thing. So, um, uh, but all the tires, all these really large tires at the moment are simply being stored on a mine site. So one can go into Google Earth and have a look at some of the big operations and you'll see these enormous mountains of tires that are lying there waiting for some form of processing um, to get rid of these tires. It is creating um, environmental hazards um, it is a challenge to uh, many of the mining operations in terms of the ESG uh, targets um, uh, because recycling, of course, is extremely uh, important uh, uh, for all the mining companies now these days. It's, it's sort of uh, on everybody's uh, lips. Um, so the recycling of tyres, if we can get this moving in South Africa, can certainly contribute enormously to those goals that customers, our customers have uh, in terms of the ESGs. So um, uh, I think uh, there's certainly significant opportunities uh, should we all be able to get together. I think any, everybody can benefit for it. And just as we get to the end, are there any final thoughts you want to put across? The time right now is, is, is important. Um, all the components, uh, I think, are, are in place. Um, the financing of the recycling process uh, can, to a large degree, be taken from, for example, remediation budgets from customers. Um, it doesn't necessarily affect their, their daily uh, operational P&Ls. Um, we have already paid money to government for recycling, so there's a, there's a financial component that needs to come from government. Uh, as I said, the, uh, there's two components of funding, um, and there may be some shortage at, at the end of the day, but there's willingness, I think, from, from industry, there's willingness from private investors, uh, we hope there's willingness from government um, to get together um, and we can create a solution. Technology exists um, and, and of course the um, customer's drive and commitment to ESG uh, is there. So, uh, so all the components are there and I think it's, it's really just time we, we, we find each other. That was Crema Media's Mining Weekly speaking to John Martin, the Vice President Southern Africa of Keltire, the Mining Tire Group.